Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha K Geek XX Chic, and we're back with another reaction to Cloak and Dagger. This is the latest episode, which was called Alignment Chart. Whoo! Last episode, we had a lot of stuff go down, particularly we got to finally get a tour through the Dark Force Dimension, something that I know I was curious about since uh, season one, and we also got to find out where Connor's been this entire time. He's very much still alive. And we saw towards the end of the episode that he is free now. Tandy was able to get him out. Um, I think the assumption is that Mayhem came out with them, but we did not see her towards the end. So she could still be trapped in there, but it was said that Tandy had to be the one to take her out of there because she's a half woman. But this episode, I'm not sure what alignment chart means. It sounds very, um, you know, the theme of this show being divine pairings and a bunch of fate and things like that. I wouldn't be surprised if it falls under this idea of things that have to align in a certain way, but we're not gonna know until we uh, watch the episode. So without further ado, let's get into it and we'll chat about it later. Okay, let's go. Who doesn't love a good story? I do. I love a good story. It had been a long time. Oh, we're back to the meeting. I missed this. And it's my mom. She's in full military. Apparently there's no cell reception in your hoodie. <laughs> Dark Force Dimension does not get T-Mobile, not today. And I stayed for you so that you would have a father who loved you. And he did. Don't put this on me. I'm not. It is on me entirely. I'm just trying to explain to you yes. how complicated you it You need to me. empathize a bit, Tandy, even and if you don't agree. Me. Leaving someone who hurts you isn't hard, Mom. You just leave. I wish it was that simple. I really wish everyone believed that, Tandy, but unfortunately... It's a very sticky emotional web. You know the next time you get mad at me because I went out and did something on my own? Remember this moment. I wish the other you were here. Okay, that was on call for Ty. I mean, I know you in a mood right now. I know you in your feelings, but that was not necessary. You know she ain't herself right now. I want to help you. Skirt, what? what? With putting me behind bars. I mean, what are you really doing? I'm trying to make good. He don't want to go back to Dark Dimension time out again. I don't even know how I, I came out of it knowing what I need to do. To stop as much of the suffering I've caused as I can. Mm. starts with you. Also, he did almost die. Mayhem is still in there. He don't want to go back. <laughs> He's like, please don't send me back. Please don't send me back to the dark place. I promise I'll be good. You know, someone rescued a dozen women from a human trafficking operation a couple of nights ago. <laughs> you don't say. Very. If you wanna take that girl. I feel bad for Riley. It's like she. It's like she probably is missing mayhem because it's like a part of herself. Oh, what is? What's that fancy store has got the bullseye out front? Target. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> They got everything. <laughs> That's amazing. He doesn't even wonderful. know the name of Tarshay. You know as you know, if. Come, so I called my uncle. He spent an afternoon at Promenade Society, and after that, Promenade Society. Afternoon. Okay, girls. When you can't even shoot at a target, I really don't need you to get an assault rifle. Please put that back. Please put that back. In order for her to tell me more, I need to find some common ground. I knew it. So, so who am I? Your abusive boyfriend or your pimp? Yeah. I mean, either one will do. So you called your black friend? Uh, no, I, I called my best friend. Oh! Ty, come on. If it were you, you'd do the same thing. No, I wouldn't use no. you or lie to you or break a promise to help you out. Sure. Well, you've been acting. Maybe I don't need you at all. Damn. See, these are the things Tandy doesn't think about, though. You know what I'm saying? She's always scamming. And look at that. She's just like, I'll take it. And honestly, she could have just taken it from her, like used her gift, but okay. I've been making myself a new costume. And it's like nothing that ever came out of me before. I have no family. I know where it came Friends. from. Maybe your only chance, son. It sounds too good to be true. It also sounds too good to pass up. Eric's the main one. I don't know, it's a gamble. Ah. It keeps the key on at all times. Makes sense. Even in the shower? Ew! No, Tyrone, that's the kind of that's the kind of trauma you're not gonna recover from, son. With his loose skin and old balls, gross. 
Oh, okay, so the cloak can be anything. I like it. Boy, if you don't hurry up and grab them keys. Hurry! God mighty, go! What are you doing? I completely forgot about O'Neal. O'Reilly, I mean. But you can't do that part alone. You're gonna need help. Oh. And you're up. Oh, Tandy, why are you walking so carelessly through a drug house? What is wrong with you? Run, rich white people, run! If he's telling the truth, I'm clear then he goes to jail. And if he's lying? He dies! Like I said, problem is solved. Clock is ticking. <laughs> I love it. Bridget's like, sweet. I don't even care no more. Really? Really, Tandy? What are you doing? Yeah, what are you even doing right now? Girl. Why are they waiting until she's done? These guys aren't very bright, but they're probably high as hell. Pay off, cops. Double security, I can still get to you. Remember that the next time you try and pimp out another girl. He saw your face, your whole face and everything, Tandy. You really are new at this vigilante thing. Within that special bottle should be all the information you need to clear yourself. Is it empty? Fucking knew it. My hero. Oh, you God, Tyrone. But I guess he was going to let his dad do that. Okay, Lady Justice, what's happening? Wow. Save your soul or get your revenge. Which one do you think is worth it? Please tell me she hit the target. Come on, Bridget. Come on, you can do this. You don't need no mayhem. Damn it. No, no, we're no closer. Not even a little. Woo, girl, you better call Tyrone. coming that makes perfect sense oh my god what a great setup oh the place tyrone could be after all who doesn't love this story i said you should have called tyrone girl Oh, Tandy, 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 you foolish girl. Wow, a lot of messages as usual. The show is always full of so many different messages and images and metaphors and all kinds of things. And this one did not disappoint in that regard. We got some closure somewhat of the Connor situation. I honestly wasn't sure what to expect of him. When he, I'm just gonna jump right in, by the way. <laughs> it was a good episode, it was a good episode. But yeah, the, the Connors thing we'll just, we'll deal with first because it was one of the bigger arcs of this episode. And I wasn't sure, honestly, I, I was with Tyrone for most of the episode. I wasn't sure if we should trust Connors. We didn't know a lot about him. Although in fairness, when they showed the flashback from last season, when they, you know, showed what happened the night that Billy died. Connors was clearly shook. Like, it, in fairness, he, he did seem a little shaken afterwards. I don't think he maliciously wanted to kill Billy. A lot of things he did after that, I think, were very strategic. What he went through to suppress that information and the reasons, like even sitting in, him sitting there and talking to Tyrone's father and, and, and him and saying that, oh, you know, after I killed your brother accidentally or whatever, uh, you know, I just thought about I was gonna lose face. I was gonna go to jail like yeah, but you took a life You know what I'm saying like to me true remorse should be oh my gosh I just killed this teenage boy and his brother watched like I don't know. I guess we're all different people, but Yeah, I feel like the, the things that he put in the priority order over the fact that he cr he did this terrible crime just sounded awful <laughs> to me very very superficial, but that is definitely a product of the environment that he was raised in. The fact that he talked about he came from a rich lineage, people who had power in New Orleans, people who, are, you know, he's used to having a life where everything was handed to him. People who come from backgrounds of a lot of wealth and a lot of power, they do feel 
invincible. They do feel entitled to a life that everybody else doesn't get to live. And when he finally looked at something or came up against a situation, I should say, where that privilege would be taken away from him, he preferred to go the route of doing all kinds of horrible things, committing all kinds of murder in order to, to keep that life, to keep that privilege, to keep that fake image of the person that he was. And so, yeah, interesting that in the dark dimension, we didn't, we never got a chance to see what Connors went through. It would have been kind of interesting, I think. We see now that it clearly got him to think, like I said, he was alone with his thoughts. There was no distractions. There was no alcohol. There was no women. There was no job. There was nothing for him to allow himself to justify anymore. So he really had to sit with his conscience. And it's a, it's a terrible thing. It's a kind of a horrible thing. Like we, no one can do damage to us in this world the way we can do it to ourselves. <laughs> we can be our own viper, as was described in the story here with Tandy throughout the episode. And Connors was kind of going crazy in there. And his conscience, there was still one, there was still a conscience in there. And it took over and we saw when he came out, like I wasn't sure what he was doing. I thought, I, I personally thought he was gonna go straight to his uncle. He fears something more than that now. <laughs> he had some time to think about what is worse than going to prison and losing face. Oh, maybe going back to that hellish dark force dimension. I think the whole time he was just like, either kill me or send me to jail. Just do not send me back to that place. And I think he realized that's another thing as well. Cause I, at first I thought maybe he would go to the uncle, but then another part of me thought as I was watching the episode, he's probably figured out that there is no place that Tyrone can't find him. <laughs> There's no place that Tyrone cannot find him, grab his behind and throw him back in the dark post dimension and be gone before anyone even knew what happened. So he had the, the fear, I wouldn't say the fear of God this time, but he had the fear of Tyrone in him and he acted accordingly. So anyway, Connors is gonna go to jail potentially, but I have a feeling the uncle's not gonna let it go down this way. Honestly, I mean, I, I love that uh, Tyrone actually brought Connors to his mother because she's somebody else who needs that closure. Like her, his father got that closure and now his mother will at least get the closure to say what she needs to say, do what she needs to do. Because I think even though she's had to move on, it was forcibly, you know, everything she's done since Billy's death was to protect Tyrone and to keep her family safe from the threat that Connor's created. So I think that she needs and deserves her moment to get her closure from Connor and maybe pistol whip him a bit. Really interesting storyline we're taking with Connors. I am very interested to see where they're gonna go with it throughout the season. As I said, I don't think that the uncle is gonna allow this to go. However, the fact that the file was missing, I genuinely believe that Connors didn't know that because people who are as powerful as Connors uncle are not going to let information like where he keeps his special things like he's not gonna let that kind of stuff just float out there. Especially with like, I feel like even though like Connors came to him with this situation about Billy, I don't think that's the first time that Connors went to his uncle about some stupid stuff that he did. Like I feel like his uncle figured out, okay, this nephew of mine is stupid. He's the kind of nephew you can't trust with tons of information. And the reason I know this is because Connors is, is here confessing everything. So I feel like the uncle probably told him that story, told him everything about where these things were for the simple fact of being able to test whether or not Connors would ever give him up and that he never left it there. And now when he goes and he finds out that he's, the first thing I'm sure he's gonna do after everything's cleared up with this fake bomb threat is check for that bottle. And when he sees that it's been tampered with, he's gonna know that Connors was the one who ratted him out. So my guess is that either he's going to kill Connors himself or he's gonna pull Connors out and try to figure out everything about Tyrone somehow. I'm telling you, this uncle's gonna get pulled in this season and I feel like Connors sadly is gonna be the connection that's gonna make that happen. On to what happened with Tandy this episode. Oh, Tandy. Every time I feel like my girl's taking one step forward, she takes five whole moonwalk steps back. I understand where her heart is. I understand that she is desperate to do the right thing in some ways, but the fact that she just keeps, she just doesn't stop to think about what her actions do to people. This was my biggest issue with her last season. Even though I know she is a good person at heart, even though I very much like her character and I love how she is with Tyrone, this part of her personality drives me nuts. With Tyrone, what drives me nuts about him is how bullheaded and stubborn he can be. With her, it's how completely oblivious to how she treats people. The fact that she, like, first of all, manipulated this woman, but I mean, I okay, we'll get to the part of how happy, how, how impressed I was with how this counselor played Tandy like a violin. Tandy thought she was a master manipulator. Uh-uh, uh-uh, she got school today. 
she gonna learn today. But the fact that Tandy, first of all, was willing to manipulate, even if it wasn't, it turns out this woman actually wasn't what she thought she was. With Tandy not knowing that, she was willing to manipulate somebody who'd been through a trauma just to get information. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and she didn't have to. This is what gets me. Tandy has the ability, and she knows she does, to take the information. And I know part of that is probably her trying to respect that there are boundaries and she shouldn't just jump into people's memories. But honestly, to me, that is less violating than manipulating someone into telling you something that's very personal and intimate and painful. But anyways, the fact that she was willing to do that just to get at her target and also this whole, like, there's a lot of conversations around abuse and victimhood uh, that's been the theme this season so far. And I guess it's part of it is to help Tandy's journey because she's going through a lot of emotions still over the revelation that her father was an abuser. But yeah, there's a lot of things coming out and I don't want to talk about too much, too much because I, I'm not a therapist. I'm not, I'm not a licensed professional. I've never been in a situation of being someone who was abused and I don't want to, you know, say anything that would be uh, inappropriate or hurt, I mean, unintentionally hurtful to someone. But it's just one of those things where I just feel like the fact that Tandy just keeps saying, oh, they should just leave. And then she turns around like, you need to, you know, get your mind. I mean, sh there's truth in what she's saying, but she really is disregarding the level of emotional and mental abuse that goes around physical abuse. Very rarely do physical abusers just, you know, hit and, and do those types of things. It's a whole system that they put into place to make their victims feel isolated, alone, weak, and powerless. They break in here typically long before they break anything out here. And that's what Tandy is failing to realize, her judgment of her mother over and over again for staying. And it's like, Tandy, you don't understand. You you've taken these pieces of broken memories that you have, which gave you some of the story, but you're not in your mom's position. She's not even trying to kind of have that empathy to see that, okay, her mom didn't choose right. It's true, her mom chose wrong in staying with an abusive man, but it wasn't with the air of trying to hurt anyone. Like her intent was that she really thought she was protecting her daughter. She really thought putting up with this abuse was better than being out. Like she didn't know what was out there. She didn't know that she was strong enough to be out there. And yes, she does have a pattern of behavior where she looks for men to take care of her. And that probably stems from a whole landslide of personal issues she's had since childhood. I guess what it comes down to is that Tandy is really quick to talk about her own pain and issues and the rough road she's been on, but she really never stops to think about the fact that other people have had the exact same thing. Anyways, I did not think she was gonna bring Tyrone into that. And the fact that, first of all, she didn't give Tyrone a heads up, which was completely like, really still Tandy? We're still not letting Tyrone, Tyrone in on these things? And exactly when he told her, it's like, so you told this woman that I'm a, a pimp or an abuser or whatever, and then you brought my black behind here, my wanted black behind here? Like, Tandy still doesn't get it. Like, and I know she doesn't. I know in her head, she, I know she didn't intentionally forget, but it's just like Tyrone has to just keep like drilling into her head that like, girl, we don't live by the same rules. We don't live in the same world. This is the blindness that unfortunately a lot of white people live with and thinking that the world is equal and everything's great and that if something's wrong, it's because surely there's more. No, sometimes it's just wrong and unfair and racist. <laughs> and she's in the South and it just, ah, uh, it just drives me nuts. And Tyrone's just doing his best to be like, girl, girl, you brought my black behind here and you put me in a position of a stereotype that so many people here are so quick to believe about me. Very truthful words brought up by Tyrone again about how Ty Tandy just thinks about what she wants first, her objective, and she very rarely thinks about the ripple effects and the, the uh, collateral damage that it causes. And so unfortunately that caused again, her and Tyrone to kind of start going in their own directions, which I don't want. Like we had so much of that last season and both of them get into so much trouble when they're not on the same track and in alignment with each other. And so, of course, Tandy went and did something stupid. I don't know what she was thinking walking into that girl up by herself. And then it's just like, in the end, she got herself caught. She got played. Played, son. Like I said, Tandy thought she was a master manipulator. She met a master manipulator today. This woman looked at her like, oh, mm, girl, you thought she was playing me, didn't you? But first of all, another thing I should mention, though, shame on the woman in that place. I mean, on the one hand, the brilliance of placing her in a place where a lot of, again, runaways, girls who are trying to get their lives back together, girls who are quote unquote invisible to society, like, 
The genius of planting someone there to find their victims is disgusting, but has to be acknowledged, it is smart. But shame on that woman, as a brown woman herself, to put other minorities through that. I really hope all the, I hope she ends up in the dark force dimension in the worst part of it. She can rot, no redemption for her because Connors for all the bullshit he did, I feel like what this woman did is worse. She deserves more. Maybe now that the Connors thing is, we've kind of put a pin in it, we'll see where it goes as far as pulling us along on this whole human trafficking thing. Thing. It was a good it was a good episode. The whole story time thing was quite interesting. I didn't know who Tandy was talking to, but it looks like it might be a place she went to because of her drug-induced state that she's just kind of going to a place where the, the place she wishes they could be. What did you guys think of the episode? How are you feeling about the developments? Are you on Team Tyrone or Team Tandy as far as uh, how they're they're going about handling this whole human trafficking thing? Please Leave your comments below, you know, of reading them and getting involved in that conversation. And if you like this video, guys, please click like. And if you want to see more from this geeky face, please click subscribe. Until next time, see ya.